Let's get started with chapter three. Um, in chapter three, we're going to talk about exponential functions first, and then we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. So let's talk about exponential functions. And um, the example I like to use most frequently actually is um, it applies so well now because it's about getting sick, right? So suppose, you know, you're feeling fine, you come to school, and then, you know, it's, it's like the day after winter break, and you've missed your friends so much, and you see your best friend, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I missed you. And your best friend is completely sick. They're coughing and sneezing, and you guys are hugging, and they cough all over you, and, you know, you were feeling fine. And then all of a sudden, by, like, lunch, you're not feeling so well anymore. You go home and you're just completely wiped out, right? You can't move. You just want to sleep. Um, so what happened? When you started the day, you had essentially no bacteria in your body. Your friend, who is like a petri dish of bacteria, coughed all over you. A couple of them made their way onto your body. And now within hours, the couple that came to you from your friend multiply and now you've got billions of them in your body and you're just wiped out so you started with very little and very very quickly it turned into billions and billions of bacteria in a very very short amount of time that's exponential growth okay where something increases rapidly in a very small amount of time so then your parents are like all right this just doesn't work they take you to the doctor they prescribe antibiotics, and then, you know, you take one, you take another one, and you're feeling just fine. Because what happened? Just as quickly as they multiplied, they now started to die off. So, whereas we saw exponential growth first, now we see exponential decay. So, no matter what the case, um, exponential functions increase or decrease very quickly in a very short amount of time. All right, so what do exponential functions look like? Well, exponential functions are power functions. Now, the base is a constant and the exponent is a variable. So we are used to polynomial functions, right? Where f of x is like x cubed plus x squared. You've got the variable here and the exponent on, as a x is a number. But now exponential functions are the reverse. And as you can see here, the base is the, is the constant, the exponent is the variable, okay? So you could have like three to the x, you could have one half to the x, that's a number raised to the x. You could have something like e to the power of x minus 1. We'll talk about what e is. It's a number, right? We'll talk about it a few sections from now. So those are what exponential functions will look like. What will their graphs look like? Well, we talked about um, the bacteria in your body. So imagine if this first one was a graph of the bacteria in your body when you just started out you essentially had no bacteria and then they started to multiply and look at what happens in a very small amount of time the bacteria grows into a very large amount so look here in a very small amount of time look at how much the bacteria grow in your body right we go over very little in time and look at how much the bacteria will grow in the body that's exponential growth. So this is what exponential functions will look like. All right, now let's just take a look at this. This is an example of exponential growth, okay? Um, as you can tell, this graph has a horizontal asymptote, okay? That horizontal asymptote is here. It's on the x-axis. That's where y equals 0. And just like we talked about in the previous chapter, it's not 0, it's y equals 0. So that's a horizontal asymptote there. 
all exponential functions have horizontal asymptotes, okay? And the default is always going to be at y equals 0. We'll talk about when it's going to be different. But the default is always y equals 0, okay? Yeah. It was just an example like x cubed plus x squared. Well, before we had x as a base to the power of a number. Now we have a number to the power of x. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay. So take a look at this graph. Is there any, are there any breaks or gaps or holes in this graph? No. That means for all x's, there is a graph. That means the domain is all real. And that's another thing you could just memorize. And you could just rattle off. For all exponential functions, the domain is always all real. This is one of those questions where if I come to you, or if I, if I were to call you at 3 a.m. and you're sound asleep, you pick up your phone and I go, what's the domain of an exponential function? All reals. All real. It's just like, you know, if somebody were to ask you for your name, you don't stop and think, same situation. Yeah, all the time. That's the thing. Because, like, in exponential functions, y equals 2 to the x, let's say, right? Is there a number that you, you can't use for x? 2 to the whatever works. You could have 2 to the 0. That's 1. You could have 2 to the 1, 2 to the 100, 2 to the negative 3. Okay. Okay. Now comes the range. The range for exponential functions is always going to look the same. It's always go you always have to start with the asymptote. Okay? Whatever the asymptote is, 0 1 2 3, mostly it's 0. And the range is always going to be either y is greater than the value of the horizontal asymptote or y is less than the value of the horizontal asymptote, okay? So how do you know what to do when? If you have something like y is equal to 3 to the x, it's the, har the range is always going to be y is greater than the asymptote. But if you have a negative out front, okay, if you have a negative here in the front, then you always do y is less than the horizontal opposite. Um, yeah, or zero. We'll do lots and lots of examples. Okay, exponential. So this is an example of exponential growth. You start out with zero back here and it grew. Exponential decay, same situation. You still have... <coughs> a horizontal asymptote also at y equals 0 the domain is again all real numbers and the range is the same okay all right when something is growing here's how I want you to be able to tell growth or decay when something is growing Look, the graph goes away from zero, right? This is y equals zero, right? Look, the graph is going away from it. For decay, the graph is going towards zero. See that? It's decaying to zero. Always think about the number of bacteria is decaying to zero. Decay towards zero. Okay, so that's how you can tell from a graph if something is growth or decay. How can you tell from an equation? Right, when b, when b is greater than 1, that's exponential growth. So that's the number being raised to the exponent. So for example, 3 to the x, the way you do these is, Locate the exponent. This is the exponent x. 
What's the number being raised to the exponent? 3. Is that number bigger than 1? Yup. It's growth. Okay? All right. So then dk is when b is between 0 and 1. Again, locate the exponent. What's the number being raised to the exponent? 1 half. That's between 0 and 1, right? dk. So let's take a look at some of these. What do you think about the first one, growth or decay? Growth. growth. Second, B. Decay. So it could be a decimal, it could be a fraction. We love all of them. Equal opportunity, right? What about C? D? You look at the exponent, the, the number that's being raised to the exponent is less than 1, so it's decay. Even though there is a 2 here, that 2 does not matter. Okay, that was a trick question. All right, so let's graph 1. <coughs> okay, asymptote. Y equals zero. That's the default case. And how do you know when it's not? Well, I haven't told you yet, but it's very easy. So far, we're just going to go default, default, default. We're going to get used to that first, and then I'll show you what's different with the other one. Okay, so mindlessly, I just say Y equals zero. Y intercept. Now we're going to have to recall some information from the previous chapter. In the previous chapter, okay, um, how did we find y-intercept? This is when what? When you put 0, 4. Thank you. Plug in x equals 0. So it's going to be y equals 2 to the 0. And what's anything to the 0? 1. So y-intercept is 1. You could say y equals 1 or you could say 0, 1. Okay? That just means that it's going to hit the y-axis at 1. Okay? Y-intercept. Just like in football, an interception is when you get in, in front of the path of the ball. Y-intercept is when you cross in front of the y-axis. Where do you cross the y-axis? At 1. Y-intercept is 1. Okay? All right. Here we go. We're going to graph 2 to the x. Is this growth or decay? Growth. I like to pick points. I always like to pick the same points for growth and then the same points for decay. Are you free to choose whatever point you like? Of course. These, I have found, give you the more manageable numbers to work with. So, for growth, I always like to pick these numbers, okay? Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, always. So here's what we're going to do. 2 to the minus 1. Let's just write them down and then we'll evaluate them. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2. All right, I'm going to be a rebel and go bottom up. What's 2 squared? Awesome. What's 2 to the 1? 2 to the 0 is 1. Now, 2 to the minus 1. Don't plug this into your calculator because I want you to get the um, get into the habit of working these. What do you do? You take the reciprocal. 2 to the minus 1 is 1 over 2 to the positive 1. So that's 1 half. Okay? I would like you to be able to reason this out for stuff that's coming later with the logs. Okay? All right, so now we plug things in. When x is minus 1, y is a half. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2, 2 and 4. Okay, you've got to put the asymptote. And now, <clears throat> we're not playing connect the dots, so... 
this won't do. I should be able to see that the graph follows the asymptote here and shoots up there. You don't have to put the arrow, but I would like to see a whole picture. What's the domain? Ooh, look at you guys go. What's the range? No. Y is greater than the asymptote zero. Okay. How do you know if it's greater than or less than? Well, look at 2x. 2 to the x, there is a plus in front, right? It's positive 2 to the x. It's going to be up, up there, above. Okay. Decay, no. There has to be a negative in the front. Like, if it was negative 2 to the x, it would be lying below the asymptote. Okay? Oh, I'm going to pause this for a minute. Is this one growth or decay? Yeah. Decay. What's the asymptote going to be? Zero. Y equals zero. And you know what? It's good habit to just put it up there as soon as you write it. Do them together. Y intercept, it's going to be 1 over 3 to the zero, which is 1. So that's zero and 1. Even that I just like to put up there. Now, No, most of the time it is, unless there is like um, other things added to the equation. So for decay, I like to use these points, negative 2 to 1 versus negative 1 to 2. Again, it's my preference, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a good system. So please don't, you know, go slow here. Write everything down. Because... No, that's just, we're good, okay. Okay, so here we go. Again, let's go bottom up. One over three to the one is just one third. Anything to the zero is one. Okay, one over three to the minus one, we take the reciprocal, so it's just three, yeah. When you have a negative exponent, you take the reciprocal, positive exponent. Reciprocal, positive exponent, 9. Okay? Nothing mysterious. It's all cool. All right? So, when x is negative 2, we're at 9. When x is negative 1, we're all the way at 3. 3. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Um, and then when x is 1, it's 1 third. So here's how it looks. So you see how it's dk because we always make graphs from left to right. And if you go from left to right, it's going towards 0, not going away from 0. Okay? All right. So what's the domain and range? Domain is all reals. Range, look at the equation. There is a positive here, so it's y is greater than 0. Okay, take a look at this next one. Growth or decay? Decay. What's the asymptote? y equals 0, and I just put that there. What's the y-intercept? Now it's going to be negative 0 0.5 to the 0. Awesome. Okay. Because it's dk, I have negative 2 to 1. So it's going to be negative 0 0.5 to the negative 2. You see where the negative is? It's outside. The exponent doesn't go to the negative. It only goes to the number. Negative 0 0.5 to the negative 1. And then negative 0 to the 1, that's um, 0.5 to the 0. So how are we going to do this? 
Look at how I do this. It's negative. What's 0.5? What's another way to write 0.5? It's a half. So yeah, so it's a half to the minus 1. And it would be negative 2. And this is negative 1 half to the negative 2, negative 4. Okay, look. When x is negative 2, y is at negative 4. When x is negative 1, y is at negative 2. And then 1 and a half. So look at what that looks like. What's the domain? Yep, all real numbers. What's the range? Y is less than 0 this time. So you see how at the very front of the equation there is a negative? What did that negative do? Instead of this graph living above the asymptote, it's now below the asymptote. So whether you have the graph correct or not, you could still look at the equation. There is a negative, so it's y is less than the asymptote. This way, even if you get the graph wrong, you could get the range right. See what I mean? Yeah. <coughs> okay, the next one, you're going to do it on your own. And oh my goodness, there is a 3 out front. Yikes. Is that a growth or decay? It's a growth. That's why I've picked those points. So you're going to do this one on your own. I'm going to pause this for two minutes and we're going to come back to it. Put the asymptote on the y-intercept and, you know, everything else and graph this. There we go, right? Look at how, look at how uh, on point Jake's graph is over there. And that's fantastic. So um, when we do, so when we do these, just, you know, be mindful of the, you know, numbers in front. All right, so the next one is going to be a negative, right? Again, I'll give you a few minutes to do that one. It's negative, and you see how um, it's growth because it goes away from zero. So it's like your debt is growing, and you're going deeper and deeper into the negatives. It's like the national deficit, you know, it's just growing, all right? So, anytime you're going away from zero. Okay, let's move on now to some of the more exciting ones. In this next example, you'll notice the equation is 5 to the power of x minus 2. The exponent has changed to x minus 2. This is a horizontal shift to the graph. So what we do is, we take x minus 2, set it equal to 0, good job, and then what's x? x is equal to positive 2, so it's shift, shifted to which direction? To the right, in the positive direction, to the right, by 2 units. So you, if you just look at it, Right? If it's x minus 2, if it's the horizontal shift, you've got to switch the sign, okay? As opposed to the vertical shift, which we'll talk about later. So, if this is being shifted horizontally, vertically, is it going anywhere? No. So, the asymptote vertically, is it going anywhere? No. So, the asymptote is still y equals 0. Because that's the why the, the asymptote only moves up or down. But this we just moved sideways. Okay? The y intercept is going to be 5 to the power of 0 minus 2, which is right, 5 to the minus 2, which is 1 over 25. Okay? All right, so let's do these numbers now. Yeah. 
It's, I know, it's a tiny little number right below the, I mean, right above the X's. Okay, so here, this is where we need to be careful. 5 to the minus 1, minus 2. 5 to the minus 3. 5 to the minus 2. Right, so that's 1 over 125, which is how much? Now, at this point, it's a really small number, right? 0 0.008. This is 1 over 25, point zero 0.04. Okay, 5 to the minus 1 is 1 over 5, point 0.2. 5 to the 2 minus 2 is 1. Okay, so look at what we're going to do here. Yes, for x equals 1, it would have been 5 to the power of 1 minus 2. It's up to you, but then to graph, right? So now take a look at this. <coughs> These are horrible numbers to graph. Why don't I go one more? x equals, because we can, right? x equals 3, I get what? 5 to the 5 to the 1, 5. So let's start graphing bottom up. When x equals 3, y is 5, is it? When x equals 2, y is 1. When x equals 0, it's 0.04. <clears throat> so then it just keeps going further and further down. So it's going to look like this. Okay? Right. Um, right, and then so the reason why I have this here is if you see that these numbers aren't going to work too well for you, go ahead and change them. Like this isn't set in stone, right? You can choose whatever numbers you like. I would like three to four graphable numbers. Like this, I would consider graphable, this first one. Three to four graphable numbers. Right? So then, what's the domain? And the range? Why is greater than the aspect? You see how we like they're all the same? Right? Now, last but not least, Take a look at this one. Here, the change doesn't happen to the x. It's minus 3 to the entire function. So the term negative 3 is responsible for a vertical shift. That means the graph is shifted down by 3 units. Because there is a vertical change, the asymptote also shifts. So this is when you get a different asymptote. So now y equals 0 is no longer the case. Now it's y equals negative 3. Right. y equals negative 3. So you see that? Until now, no change to the asymptote. Now all of a sudden, y equals minus 3. No. Only when it's with the x do you do that. Right, so now the range, okay, so it's a positive here. So the range is going to be y is greater than negative 3. You see that? And the domain is still all reals. Right. So now we're going to plug stuff in here. It's because there is a positive in the front of the one of the states, y is greater than. The asymptote, Okay, so here we go. 1 over 3 to the minus 2, minus 3. 1 over 3 to the power of negative 2 is 9 minus 3, 6. 1 over 3 to the minus 1, minus 3 is 3 minus 3, 0. 
1 minus 3 is negative 2. 1 over 3 minus 3. 1 over 3 minus 9 over 3. Negative 8 over 3. The y-intercept is negative 2. The y-intercept is when x equals 0, so it's negative 2. So quickly, I mean, we can graph this one. And negative 2, we're at 6. Negative 1, we're at 0. And then here. Now, so now you can do your homework. Do next class, which is tomorrow, on graph paper. If you would like to receive credit, you, you have to draw the x and y axis with a ruler. You've got to have the asymptote on there. And please, please, please calibrate your axes. So something like this, no good. First of all, they have to be drawn with a ruler. But give me the markings. At least do that, or at least do that, okay? Not the curve, the x and y axes.